Welcome to the Philippine Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here's a menu of some of our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market, an MPV from Mitsubishi, the 2020 Expander Cross, and a pickup from Isuzu, the 2020 D-Max Boondock. Plus, a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two subcompact SUVs, the Hyundai Kona GLS and the Sangyong Tivoli Premium Sport. On Autopedia, we'll talk about changing the oil in your car. And together, with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the launch of the new BMW 7 Series as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus and we'll be right back after this short break. Part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020-2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Mitsubishi. The Mitsubishi Expander got a good reception when it was first introduced to the Philippine market in 2018 a bestseller in the small MPV segment with a little more than 13,000 units sold. Mitsubishi sold more of the 7-seater MPV in 2019, reaching the 19,000 mark. The COVID-19 pandemic may have scuppered hopes of selling even more expanders in 2020, even with the addition of the Expander Cross, an MPV and crossover or SUV guide. Mitsubishi Motors Philippines has launched the Expander Cross as the top variant of its best-selling small MPV. It arrived with cladding kit, redesigned grille and bumpers, and a lifted suspension that made it longer, taller, and wider than its siblings at 4,500 millimeters long, 1,800 millimeters wide, and 1,750 millimeters tall with a 2,775mm long wheelbase. The redesigned grille and bumper, black fender arches and side body moldings, side and tailgate garnishes, as well as the now segment leading 225mm ground clearance lift the expander in look and stance from MPV to crossover and SUV territory. The Expander Cross exterior also features LED headlamps, rear LED combination headlamps, new roof rails and shark fin antenna. It also comes with new 17-inch two-tone alloy wheel design 
wrapped by 205 by 55 R17 tires. The Expander Cross shares the same 4A91, 1.5 liter, inline 4, DOHC, 16 valve engine with MyVec as the Expander GLS, GLX Plus, and GLX. The engine generates 104 PS at 6,000 revolutions per minute and 141 newton meters of torque at 4,000 RPM and drives the front wheels. The Expander Cross shares the same interior length and width 2,840 millimeters by 1,411 millimeters that Mitsubishi touts for its best-selling MPV, which allows for a roomy cabin for seven passengers. Second and third row seats fold flat to provide flexibility for hauling passengers and cargo. The new dual-tone leather upholstery and trim lend a touch of class to the expander cabin. Practical and functional features include a multitude of storage spaces for all knickknacks of family life and the gear and gadgets of sporty and connected individuals. Power outlets accessible in all three rows. A keyless operation system for entry and engine start. The three-spoke steering wheel clad in leather with stitching that tilts and telescopes and dotted with buttons and controls for audio, cruise control, etc. The dash is ergonomic and elegant with bright touches of tech, including the white-lit, high-contrast instrument cluster. Then there's the 2DIN multimedia system with a 7-inch touchscreen with radio tuner, MP3 player, USB, auxiliary input, Bluetooth with mirror link feature for Android OS with amber color display and six speakers. In raising the Expander Cross's ground clearance, Mitsubishi tuned the suspension system that features front McPherson struts with coil springs and stabilizer and torsion beam in the rear to allow for a comfortable and stable ride on rough roads without sacrificing the kind of ride and handling that's appreciated by owners of earlier Expander variants. Many owners enjoy driving the Expander for the high seating position, complementing the wide windshield providing good visibility as well as being one of the quietest cabins in the segment. Expander Cross drivers also benefit from the driver such technologies such as active stability control, traction control, hill start assist, as well as the anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution. Stopping power comes from a system using 15-inch ventilated discs in front and 9-inch leading and trailing drums with a 10-inch master vacuum brake booster. The Expander Cross comes with all safety features standard in all variants, including SRS airbags for driver and front seat passenger, 3-point ELR seatbelts for 7, with the driver and front seat passenger benefiting from pretensioners and child seat isofix and tether anchors. Finally, the Expander comes in special colors, sunrise orange and quartz white pearl. The Expander Cross has further blurred the lines between and among MPVs, SUVs, and crossovers. And it may be a good thing for automakers, or not, as they now have to be more creative and thinking out of the box to come up with vehicles that would cater to many while satisfying the needs of the few. But it would be great for buyers who would now have a broader range of options. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break.
What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Welcome back to Auto Focus, and we now have the latest auto industry news. The world's best-selling plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, or PHEV, is now in the Philippines. Mitsubishi Motors Philippines Corporation, or MMPC, announced that the Manila Bay dealership, Peak Motors Philippines Incorporated, is now offering the Outlander PHEV, a compact crossover with 4x4 capability, powered by a gasoline engine and electric motors. Mitsubishi touts the Outlander PHEV as the world's first plug-in hybrid SUV, which has sold over 260,000 units across Europe, North America, Japan, and Australia. Plugged in to full charge, the Outlander PHEV can drive on pure electric for 55 kilometers. On longer drives, gasoline and electric motors take over in tandem. MMPC is very excited to launch the Outlander PHEV in the Philippine market. Best represents Mitsubishi's expertise in automotive engineering and its ever-evolving technology, said Matsuhiro Oshikiri, President and CEO of MMPC. The Outlander PHEV showcases the latest in Mitsubishi tech, like super all-wheel control, active stability control, and anti-lock brake system. Also, for safety are adaptive cruise control, forward collision mitigation, blind spot warning, and lane change assist, automatic high beam, ultrasonic misacceleration mitigation system. The Outlander PHEV is priced at 2,998,000 pesos. Honda Cars Philippines has launched what it calls a first-ever online dealership, Virtual at Honda. This Honda online dealership offers much of what clients can get when visiting an actual dealership, including sales and after-sales service, all from the comforts of home, the office, or virtually anywhere with good Wi-Fi or other modes of connectivity. Virtual at Honda can be visited via HCPI's official website, www.hondafil.com. Once there, click on the red Virtual Showroom tab to be taken to Virtual at Honda dealership. There, customers can check out the Virtual Showroom to pick out their Honda of choice, choose from available colors, and view in 360-degree detail. At the virtual showroom, customers can easily navigate to check highlighted features of Honda vehicles and detailed spec sheet, as well as all the important SRPs. Customers can then head towards Shopping Tools Corner to select and chat with preferred Honda dealerships, download brochures, use a loan calculator, submit an inquiry, apply for an auto loan, schedule a test drive, request for a quotation, make an online reservation. Customers can even check dealership inventories for available stock. Finally, at the After Sales tab, customers can schedule appointments for vehicle servicing with knowledge about cost, parts availability, and even available promos. Isuzu Philippines Corporation has reached a new milestone topping the 300,000 unit sales mark in August of this year. IPC reports that has now sold 300,133 units as of August, broken down into 241,389 light commercial and 58,744 commercial vehicles. Isuzu achieved this record after only 23 years since it began operations in 1996. 
along the way, Isuzu was the country's top truck brand for 20 consecutive years. Isuzu attributed this success to the company's wide range of commercial vehicles that serve as a reliable cargo hauler and people mover for various trades. The company also cited its network of 40 dealerships nationwide for helping it achieve the milestone. We take pride on our strong dealer network, especially with the support we are getting from our dealer principals, shareholders, and parts suppliers. This sales milestone will not be possible without them, said IPC President Hajime Koso. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020-2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now! Welcome back to this edition of Autofocus, the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here's our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models belonging to the same category on Head to Head. Korean car makers are among the more prolific makers of SUVs for the global market. Many have reached local shores, including two subcompact SUVs in this edition of Head to Head, the Hyundai Kona GLS and the Sangyong Tivoli Premium Sport. Standing out in the crowd in the local subcompact SUV market is difficult. Taking up space of about 4.165 meters long, 1.80 meters wide, and 1.55 meters high, with a ground clearance of 170 millimeters. The Hyundai Kona 2.0 GLS Automatic attempts to do just that with an exterior design that incorporates a long front overhang, honeycomb-like grille, distinctive projector-type headlights, separated from and below narrow slits for dynamic running lights. The exterior also features black fender arches and side moldings, while the rear is highlighted by rear spoiler with high mount stoplights. The Kona comes standard with turn signal repeaters on side mirrors. Best spoke 17 inch alloy wheels wrapped by 215 by 55 R17 tires help give the Kona the required wide SUV stance. The Sangyong Tivoli 1.6 Premium Sport Automatic 
takes up space of about 4.195 meters long, 1.795 meters wide, and 1.590 meters tall, with a minimum 167 millimeters ground clearance. Exterior features include halogen lamps, LED daytime running lights, front fog lamps, power adjustable and foldable side mirrors, rear combination lamps. It comes with 215 by 45 R18 tires wrapped around 18 inch aluminum alloy brilliant black finish. The Kona is powered by a 2 liter 4 cylinder NU MPI Atkinson engine that generates 149 horsepower at 6200 RPM and 180 Newton meters of torque at 4500 RPM. The Euro 4 compliant engine drives the front wheels via six speed automatic transmission with manual shifting modes and an override lockup torque converter for higher fuel economy at highway speeds. Stopping power comes from ventilated front and solid rear brake discs. The suspension system uses front McPherson struts and rear coupled torsion beam axles. The Tivoli is powered by a 1.6 liter inline 4 DOHE 16 valve gasoline engine with dual variable timing that generates 128 horsepower at 6000 RPM and 160 Nm of torque at 4600 RPM. Power and torque are transmitted to the front wheels via a 6 speed automatic transmission with smart driving modes. The brake system uses front ventilated and rear solid discs. The suspension system features front McPherson struts and torsion beams in the rear. A smart key with button start system gets you conveniently into the Kona cabin, which features fabric upholstered front seats that slide and recline, and rear seats that split back and fold 60-40. Other standard features include air conditioning, trip computer, overhead console with sunglass holder, power windows, door locks and side mirrors, and cruise control. The steering wheel tilts and telescopes. For entertainment, there's an audio system with a floating type radio display with Bluetooth connectivity and controls on steering wheel, six speakers, and two tweeters. The Tivoli comes with smart keyless entry system and push start engine start stop button. The seats are upholstered in brown leather. The front seats are heated and ventilated. Also wrapped in leather is D-Cut smart steering wheel which comes with controls for audio and Bluetooth hands-free phone as well as trip and set buttons. The instrument cluster comes with color adjust. Other standard features automatic dual zone climate control, power windows, overhead console with sunglass holder. The audio system comes with a 7 inch LCD touchscreen that plays MP3 and features auxiliary port, Bluetooth, and USB portal. Among active and passive safety and security features in the Kona are a mobilizer three-point emergency locking seat belts for front and two rear passengers, plus a two-point ELR seat belt for middle passenger in the rear, dual front airbags, side airbags, curtain airbags, anti-lock braking system, and tire pressure monitoring system. The Tivoli comes standard with driver and front seat airbags, three-point ELR seat belts for all occupants, alarm and immobilizer, ABS, and rear view camera and rear parking sensor. Both the Tivoli and the Kona are great looking subcompact SUVs, but they do have enough comfort and convenience features as well as connectivity to compete in a crowded and loaded segment. The sales numbers will provide good indicators.
it's fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Ilustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Ilustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Ilustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph Welcome back to Auto Focus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. The latest BMW 7 Series is now in the country. BMW brought in two variants. This special feature unveils BMW Philippines' thoughts on the launch, the variants, and how these are faring in the market. SMC Asia Car Distributors Corporation, the official importer and distributor of BMW in the Philippines, rolled out two variants of BMW's flagship full-size sedan, the 730i and the 745LE, in a digital debut on social media that in just five days was viewed more than 120,000 times. BMW touts the 7 as made for those who drive the world. So, who is that exactly? The target market for the 7 is the big influencers in the world. Like the tagline of made for those who drive the world, these are people who shape the future of companies, these are people who shape the future of industry, and also the economy on both the local scale and the global scale. But having said that, obviously the 7 is not limited to people, you know. BMW is always trying to project itself as a more friendly brand. So basically, you know, we really don't mind, you know, if you're an enthusiast who just likes BMW. We're more than happy to have you as a fan of the 7. It doesn't matter whether you can really afford it or not, but as long as you're a fan, uh, then the things we have done our job. The two variants of the 7, chosen for local buyers, are equipped and couture in what BMW calls the pure excellence trim. What does this mean for the 745 LE? The 745 LE is the, the ultra luxurious 7 series that we have. So it has basically everything on it, no? Air suspension, 19 inch wheels, fine Napa leather, even the rear entertainment, then heated and cool ventilated seats all around. I mean, the, the list goes on and on, no? And this is really the ultimate luxury car in the BMW range. So what does pure excellence mean for the 730i? On the other hand, our more exciting volume model, which is the 730i, is a short wheelbase model. The wheelbase is basically more inches shorter than the 745 LE. However, being a short wheelbase version and being a 730 model, it brings an excellent value proposition. Yet, retaining all the exciting features and important features that make a BMW 7 Series what it is. So we make sure we kept the nice leather seats, which are both electrically operated front and rear. We have uh, the soft closed doors, we have a Harman Kardon stereo, we have the electric window shades, then we have air suspension, all neat 
It's all packaged in a very, very competitive price. And yes, it's still a 17. The new 7s now feature the BMW operating system 7.0 software, iDrive controller, and BMW Live Cockpit Professional, which comes with navigation and multimedia system, a 12.3-inch digital high-resolution instrument cluster, and 10.25-inch control display. Apple CarPlay is also standard across the range for enhanced smartphone connectivity. The 745 LE also features gesture control. The new BMW 745 LE is the first ever plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, PHEV, in the Philippines. Powered by a 3-liter BMW twin-power six-cylinder gasoline paired with an electric motor that together generates 394 horsepower and 600 newton meters of torque. BMW Philippines believes it is the right time to bring in a PHEV model onto local shores. Yes, it is the right time. I mean, we have to start somewhere. Is the Philippines ready for a full electric offensive? Not immediately. And uh, the infrastructure is what is still missing, meaning charging stations. Right now, we're very lucky that the 745 LE has its own charger built into the car, so it can be plugged from any 220 volt out there. Photometro is lower charge. And every time you buy a 745, uh, it comes to the wall box charger, which is uh, a quick charger in a month. And it can be installed in your home or in your office. So that is a dedicated charging station. I think electric vehicle electrification will be the future. The 730i is powered by a 2-liter engine, which had many questioning if this makes this short wheelbase 7 underpowered. The power and torque, however, should allay that fear. 265 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. Still, the question remains and needs an answer. The effects of turbocharging, you're able also to produce a very high efficiency engine. 2 liter and 265 horsepower, that's over 130 horsepower per liter. And yes, you have the drivability of a normal car. And I've driven the 730i extensively. You really do not feel that it is a 2 liter small engine. When you step on it, it really goes. It'll go all the way up to 250 kilometers per hour. And being a smaller engine, there is also the very big reduction in weight, which will also further improve driving dynamic. New car manufacturers, I mean, basically all car manufacturers now are heading towards this direction already. The days of having these large engines that uh, consume a lot of fuel are numbered already. Despite the questions on engine size, BMW reports a strong demand for the 730i, as well as the 745LE. The next batch of 7s arriving in the next few weeks already have buyers waiting for them. We've taken a lot of reservations already, so a lot of these cars incoming have uh, already customers from them. They already have customers. The first batch of cars came uh, quite some time ago already, so instead of just having them parked in the warehouse, we decided to sell them already. And uh, I think the reason, the main reason why the 730i is moving for a very good value proposition. BMW Philippines has great expectations for the new 7s and invites more to come visit their website, if not the dealership itself, to check out the 745LE and the 730i. So there is very big expectation for the 7 to really move. No? So one of the reasons why we're able to get such a good price for it is because we committed a certain volume to it. No? So those who want to check out, the, have a look at the 7, we do have the 745 in all showrooms in Metro Manila right now. So they're they're more than welcome to take a look at it. No? Unfortunately, the 730, although we know we acknowledge it's a good problem, we managed to sell out all the 730s already. So we should have a new batch of cards in late September or early October. So your viewers you can take a look at it online. There have been, uh, thanks to media practitioners like yourself, we've had excellent coverage already in the media. There's a lot to read about on this new 7. You can expect more as the test drives come in. There's also a lot of information available on our website, www.tsw.com.ph. Uh, so please have a look, register your interest, and when the car comes, we can give you a call and we can show you, we can, we can give you a private tour of the 7.
it may be a good sign for the auto industry and also for the economy that a luxury vehicle like the 7 Series is generating a lot of interest and moving quickly from showroom to buyers. Let's hope the trend continues. Be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020-2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. Before COVID-19 locked down communities and shut down the economy, pickup truck sales were surprisingly strong and steady for the car makers and distributors which had them in their lineup. Even more surprising was that the special edition 4x4 variant drove sales as authorities began easing community quarantine restrictions and reopening the economy. Isuzu Philippines launched the 2020 D-Max Bundok 4x4. To the most loyal patrons, the D-Max pickup has always been true to Isuzu's promise to be a reliable partner in providing transport for business and family. And as the recent launch of the D-Max Bundok 4x4 showed, many owners also relied on and trusted the D-Max to take them safely to roads and trails less traveled, or even trails yet to be discovered. Rolling out the 2020 D-Max Bundok 4x4 in these trying, difficult, and uncertain times, Isuzu said it wants to encourage people to learn to live life differently. At the subliminal level, perhaps one message Isuzu wants to impart with the Bundok variants is for people to learn to face the difficulties with boldness and confidence and continue to enjoy life amid a pandemic. Certainly, the 2020 Isuzu D-Max Boondock 4x4 manual transmission cuts a bold and strong figure on the road. With bulked up bumpers and fenders, plus roof rails, the D-Max Boondock 4x4 is 5.295 meters long, 1.860 meters wide, and 1.9 meters tall. The wheelbase measures 3.095 meters. The D-Max Bundok 4x4 boasts a ground clearance of 247 millimeters riding on a suspension system featuring independent double wishbones with coil springs in front and semi-elliptical leaf springs in the rear and both using monotube nitrogen charged shock absorbers. Adding to height as well to the bold look are a 265x70 R17 all-terrain tires wrapped around 17-inch matte black alloy wheels. One could easily tell the D-Max is a Bundok variant with those eye-catching decals and graphics depicting Mount Apo, the tallest active volcano in Mindanao and the Philippines. The exterior also features bi-LED projector headlamps with integrated daytime running lamp, dark gray radiator grille, engine hood garnish, front bumper guard, 
To the side are lip type over fender, side molding, and steel honeycomb side step boards with the Bundok logo. The rear gets LED combination lamps as well as bold Bundok graphic. The Bundok also comes with a high mount stop lamp. Getting into the Bundok 4x4 can be a challenge for some, even with the cool and functional step board. The Bundok comes with a passive entry system, which means no need to take keys out of pocket to unlock the doors. Welcoming driver and passengers into the roomy double cab are comfortable perforated leather seats, front bucket seats with adjustable headrests, back pockets, and convenience hooks. Rear seating for three has a cushion that splits 60-40. The backrest comes with two adjustable headrests and a center armrest. The dashboard and instrumentation looks quite functional, but with a multi-information display. Infotainment comes from a system using an 8-inch full-touch monitor and plays CD, DVD, radio tuner, has Bluetooth and iPod connectivity, a navigation system, as well as an auxiliary in-jack, USB portal, and AVM. It also is ready to add a tire pressure monitoring system. The audio systems can be controlled using buttons on the leather-wrapped three-spoke steering wheel. On highways and on the roughest of trails, the D-Max Bundock offers comfort and convenience features that are now standard in most self-respecting luxury sedans. Air conditioning, power windows, door locks, 15 storage compartments, 10 cup holders, 12 volt accessory socket, and three USB charging ports. A push of the button starts the D-Max engine. A four-cylinder blue power diesel engine with turbocharger and intercooler that generates 177 PS at 3,600 revolutions per minute and 380 newton meters of torque at 1,800 to 2,800 RPM. In this 2020 Isuzu D-Max Bundok 4x4, power is transmitted to two or four wheels via a six-speed manual transmission with gear shift indicator. A terrain command select dial makes it easy to shift from two to four wheel drive, even up to 100 kilometers per hour. On and off the road, the driver benefits from a host of new technology aimed at helping with car control and prevent accidents like anti-lock brake system, electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, brake override system, electronic stability control, traction control system, hill start assist, and hill descent control. Reversing is made easier and safer by a reverse sensing system complemented by a reverse camera. Driver and front seat passenger are protected by front dual airbags and ELR seatbelts with pretensioner and load limiter. Three passengers on the second row also get ELR seatbelts. Child safety isn't forgotten. There are child seat tethers on the second row as well as childproof rear door locks. The 2020 Isuzu D-Max Bundok 4x4 MT is provisioned with all the features one should need in order to live life differently, confidently, and bold in these difficult times. The D-Max Bundok 4x4 should be among vehicles that can convince many in these difficult times to go ahead and add a new fun and practical vehicle for the family. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Today we're going to talk about a topic that's probably the most gus gus topic in the entire automotive universe. Changing the oil in your car. The most frequently asked question is, what oil should I use? And to answer that, very simple. 
check your owner's manual. It's in there somewhere and it tells you what kind of oil that you should use. Just for kicks, we're changing the oil of this Mitsubishi Montero and then we flip to the section where it says maintenance. And here we have selection of engine oil. Now granted, this is not the most straightforward answer because it gives you a lot of different numbers and one look, most people would actually turn away and say, ah, <laughs> I have no idea what this is and I don't understand it. But most other manuals will tell you the exact specification of oil that you're going to use. And it's always a number followed by a W, followed by a dash, and another number. And we're going to explain those numbers in a little bit, but if you just want to check it out, there are about a million YouTube videos out there that says how to explain and how to read these oil specification numbers. We're not going to do any of that, you can check that out, but we're just going to basically semi-dumb it down for everybody. Eliminate all the technical talk and all of that stuff. So this is your motor oil. Different brands, different branding, but the important thing is this one here, these numbers. SAE 10W40. Every oil label has this. Since we're in the Philippines, there's only two numbers that you should remember. These last two, it's either 30 or 40. Any of them will work on any car here. The first number here with the W, we don't care because W here stands for winter. And since we're in the Philippines and winter is never going to happen here. So all you have to do is remember, 40 or 30 will work for any car that's sold in this country. It doesn't matter what oil brand that you have, it doesn't matter who makes it, what additives, all of them will work, irregardless. Just don't put cooking oil in it. That's kind of a dumb no-brainer. It goes without saying that when you buy a car, maintenance is part of it. Your engine has moving metal parts inside. The oil is the film in the barrier that prevents these two parts from rubbing against each other too much. It's no-brainer to think that if you rub two pieces of metal together, heat will be generated and metal will come off. If you don't have any oil in your engine, you're going to have a very, very short engine life. So you have to change the oil regularly. It's one of the easiest and most sure-fired ways to keep your engine happy and running long. Now, as for oil change intervals, before, back in the old days, it can be as low as 5,000 because of mineral oil. But now, 10,000, 15,000, even 20,000 intervals is not a problem anymore. Almost oils right now are fully synthetic because that's what the market demands. There are still some oils that are mineral, meaning straight from the ground, they process it, no additives, no nothing, no further processing, that's mineral oil. Synthetic oil has other additives and every brand has their own. The same way that one soap has luxury fragrance, the other soap has extra bubbles. These are the few things that differentiate the brands from each other. So that's where the synthetic comes from, the additional processing after the base oil has been processed. And by the way, as far as manufacturing goes, all oil comes from Saudi Arabia. There's no oil pump from Germany, there's no oil pump from France, there's no oil pump from the Philippines, no. All of these things come from Saudi Arabia. The oil manufacturers buy this by the barrel in bulk as the base material, which consists of 90 to about 95% of the volume of the oil. It's all the same. It's the additives that make it different. The same way that gasoline is, any brand that you hear out there, you hear it often enough, it'll work on your car. <laughs> With every change oil, it is recommended that you change your oil filter, but I will say it is required that you change your oil filter. So, as the name says, this is a filter. Its job is to filter and get dirty. Once this is full of dirt and debris in, from inside the engine, it has nowhere else to go. So where do you think it's gonna go? It's gonna go back inside the oil and goes in, inside your engine. It keeps going round and round inside the engine with all that dirt and debris. So 200, 300 bucks gives you a lot of peace of mind. And that's how you do an oil change. Pretty simple, it takes less than an hour. You can actually do it yourself at home. Uh, you and probably one of your friends. Then beer na lang yung pangbayad. That's our feature on Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this edition of your Automobile Electronic Magazine informative as well as entertaining. You can also check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe.